So an emailer told John that he blew it. So John gets these emails from people. He believes everything he hears. It's so funny. So this emailer is telling John, hey, I think Kate's into you. I think you could probably fuck her. And uh, of course, this is what John wants to believe. This is what he will believe. Well, it's funny because I have this guy who emails me all the time. And I didn't want to even give him the satisfaction. I told you about it, but I'll tell everybody else. And, And he goes, you blew it, John. Kate said she was attracted to you, but you said that you won't date her because she's too young. And now Chad is with her. And now look what you lost. They fucked all night. And he shows me a picture of you and Chad. I'm like, oh, no, my no. God. But there was another guy in the picture. Yeah, but he cropped that out. Oh, he did? Yeah. So oh. I'm going. I'm going God. Kid. Chad. Yeah. Poor I'm, Chad. I feel bad for him. Yeah. I'm like, this can't be true. No, it can't be uh, true. Uh, it wasn't true. Thank God. I mean, but I feel sorry for him. I mean, I'm, you know, I don't get jelly over like Trevor, but, well, but Trevor Chad would, Chad would piss me off, Kate. Oh, my God. Well, Trevor. This girl that was too young for him a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Now he'd be jealous and upset if she fucked Chad. Why? Who cares? Yeah. You don't like her that way, John. You keep telling us that over and over again. So what do you care? Yeah, you should. He keeps bringing up sexual things to her, too. Yes. The whole show. He keeps going like, doesn't Ray's chin look like a vagina? And she kind of played it off. And he goes, it's like a gina chin. And she played it off again. <laughs> but it's like a vagina there. You can like your dick in it. Like a and she finally went like, Yes, it's like a vagina, and he's like, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, go, like, yeah and I have, I have clips coming up where he starts telling her about his sexploitations yeah. and going into graphic detail. It's like Kate doesn't. I'm sure these are the phone conversations too. I'm mm-hmm. sure it is. Kate doesn't want to hear about a 58 year old hooking up with a 62 year old. This it's is how you gross. turn girls on, Carl. You're wrong. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm mistaken on this a girl one. Sloppy wet. <laughs> okay, so at this point. Chad now joins the show. This is where it gets good. Yeah, so John had sent out the invite to Chad because he wanted Chad to come on to bash Ray DeVito because he didn't know Kate was going to come on because she didn't respond, and then she came on, and so now, uh uh-oh, this is awkward. We have this love triangle happening, and now we're all on the show together. And uh, Yeah, this gets awkward quick. I do think, okay, I think John's an idiot. I do think that Kate is playing him. Now, I'll, I'll provide more evidence of that. If you want to uh, disagree with me, Patrick, I'm all open to that. But I also believe that Chad is not playing a character, that he really is this incel that he comes off as on this show. Guess who? Now, you know, before, like I sent you the link, but I didn't hear back. And I was like, she's probably still shopping. So then I sent, <laughs> I sent Chad the link to Trash Ray. So now Chad's in here. Now, it's up to you if you want me to, because I don't want to like. Oh, Chad's here? Yeah, but I don't want to bring him on if you don't oh, want Oh, bring on. it on. Bring him on. Hey, Chad. What's Chad. going on? Chad, what? please don't troll me. Kate, Kate, why are you lying about me? He is the most broken record of all the broken records. You know what he's going to say. Why are you lying about me? Everyone's always lying about poor Chad. It's crazy. This is go-to line to me. Why are you lying? Why are you, why lying? you lying? Why are you lying? This guy's lying about me. They're all lying about me. I've caught Chad in about six lies, provably, this week. One involving your sister-in-law. Oh, yeah. The the whole thing where he uh, he would not face you. He said, he said that he was messaging with her and he was going to come down to lunch. And I, I just let her know how Chad operates. If, if he comes to lunch and I'm here and you didn't tell him, he'll blame you for setting, me, setting him up. He'll be like, you ambushed me with Melton. Right. And your your sister-in-law, I, I've met her twice. She seems like a very genuine, sweet, trusting person. Right. And she just doesn't think of people acting and behaving like Chad. And I said, I said, no, you better tell him I'm down here. So she told him I'm down here and uh, having lunch. And he's like, I can't see him yet. Come up and meet me. And then he went on to tell everybody that she said, Melton ran from lunch. He told everybody he went down to lunch and asked, where's Melton? And she said, oh, and your brother, that oh, Melton didn't want to see you. He ran from lunch. 
It doesn't even like, make sense. Who, when when Chad makes up lies, you're just like, but Chad. why? Why would that even happen? There's what a, would Patrick Melton be afraid of? What do you mean? Someone beloved chatter told me, and I never thought about this, that guys Chad's age and older forget that there's like receipts for everything now. Yep. Yes. And they don't think about it like that. Chad, Chad, uh, so there's a text message to your sister-in-law saying, I don't want to see Patrick. I'm not coming down. Come, But he tells everybody Melton ran from lunch. He didn't want to see me. And it's like, so that's provably false. And then now there's this check thing going around. When I when I met Chad Zumach, he was opening for me at, at the Tulsa Looney Bin in Oklahoma. Yeah. He had driven three days from Tampa and driven three days back oh, no. and five days doing shows <laughs> uh, for $500. Okay. So so 11 days, $500. It wouldn't cover the gas, right. much less food. And so Chad gets the check for $500. Drives back to Florida. On the way in Birmingham, he stops. He tweets out, tells everybody, "I just got robbed at gunpoint." Oh, I remember this. Outside yes. a hotel. Yes, it was October two thousand one, two thousand twenty one. Yep. And he says they took my money, they took my backpack, they took my podcasting equipment, they took my check, they took everything. And I said, "Oh, let me text the manager to tell her to stop payment on the check." And he's like, "No, I deposited it with my phone." I all these texts I posted on Twitter yesterday. He's like, I already paused it on my phone. Thank God, you know. So then I, I did this thing about Chad. I said, Chad, you made four hundred dollars that weekend. I knew he made five, but I wanted him to post the check to prove it's just trolling Chad. Sure. I wanted him to post the check. Like, no, I made five hundred. As if that's <laughs> it was the same thing, but a okay. good rate <laughs> right. for eleven days. Yeah. So I I tell him uh, if you can post the check proving you made more than four hundred, I'll double it. So he waits three months and then he posts the check yesterday. I got the check. And he goes, and I never even cashed it. <laughs> what? So there's at least two lies, and here's what they are. He forgets he texted me that he cashed it. Right. He forgets he said it was stolen. Right. <laughs> but he also has it still, and he never cashed it. Well, so like that's the thing. I love, people, I love poor people who try to pretend like this is what a rich person would do. Yeah, I don't right. even cash checks that you give me for the yeah, work that I do. Yeah, they don't put the money in their bank. They just yeah. forget it. It's like, I'm, I'm so rich. You know, I, I do some, something for a week and a half, and I don't even care if I get paid. That's how rich I am. <laughs> what? Right. So it just proves he lies about everything. He, yes. he said he cashed a check. He said he didn't cash a check. He said he had the check stolen. This proves that whole robbery was fake. Yes. This proves a whole. Ro this proves a past lie. So it's, it, I mean, he just lies about Patrick, everything. I'm starting to think that his friend in Cleveland wasn't in a car accident. I don't know. I mean... It's starting yeah. to seem like this person that I'm, no one could find in any social media to even exist in the world might not have been a car wasn't accident. a writer for the Kareem Abdul. <laughs> or no, wait, for the, sorry, I'm getting them mixed up now. God, <laughs> he said he was a writer for some roast and that Comedy Central went in and took him out of the... He did? That's why he's not on IMDb. <laughs> it's like, what? what? <laughs> Chad, you can't write roast jokes. He's so bad at that style. It's of, awful. We saw him at Kevin Brennan's roast. He had oh, yeah. no idea what to do with that. Reading your own jokes, you're flubbing them. Yeah. The only you one getting laughs it. during his set was Aaron Berg. <laughs> was the only one getting laughs during that. All right. So Chad is now claiming that all Kate wants is attention. Which, could you imagine someone here in the Dappleverse <laughs> wants attention? Them, them's fighting words right there. Yeah, you're doing it today on John's show. You're trying to get attention to yourself in a... The situation. Well, wait, 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 Chad. I asked. I, she. I mean, we've been talking purely platonically, having a lot of laughs, and then she said, "Hey, do you want me to come on today?" So, but, but we've talked for how long now, Kate? This has been going on for a while, right? I it's mean, been going on for a while. Yeah, but obviously, she tells me about Trevor. It's not anything <laughs> nefarious. I mean, she tells me she's going out on a date with Trevor. It's something. I'm not hitting on her, Chad. But apparently you w wanted to hit on her on Monday night, correct? No, <laughs> we were fine. What the fuck is going on? Apparently you wanted to hit on her on Monday you had night. Intentions of hitting on her, did you not? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck are we even talking about right now? You're the nefarious one. I, I have to point this out. What 24-year-old woman wants to talk on the phone with a 58-year-old for hours? hours? They don't even Six like talking hours. on the phone. I don't know anyone in their 20s who talks on the fucking phone. Right. This is a, a 15, 16, 17-year-old thing. Yes. And then, 
And then you have a 50 year old, a 60 year old and a 24 year old who, who talk for six hours at a time. Well, and what's crazy is when you say like 15, 16 year old, they even get into, I think I have the clip in a little bit here. They even get into a fight about who talks to her more on the phone. Yeah. That'd be like if, you know, you and your buddy in eighth grade are both have a crush on the same girl. You're like, yeah, well, guess what? I called her last night. I did too. Well, oh, really? Yeah. I wanted to talk to her for her. Oh, yeah. This is one of Chad's old MOs. He's he's very concerned with who's known people the longest, who's yes. a better friend. He's done this with Ray. He actually yelled at Ray previously about Kate Meany, like, Bet me that I'm better friends with Kate Meany than you right now. Bet me that I'm not better. It's yeah, like, <laughs> it's like, what a sick bet. <laughs> I, one of his big comebacks to us when we first started goofing on him was he said that Joe Rogan knows what his name is. Yeah. <laughs> okay, but, Joe Rogan but, listens to his show. <laughs> like, okay, but you haven't been on his show or ever talked to him. So who cares? What does that mean? What do you mean? He by thinks that? he told, he said this. He said, Tim Dillon and Joe Rogan listen to his show. <laughs> They definitely do not. No one does. Right. What are right. talking about? He, they're one. They're two of the 78 Patreons, Chad. <laughs> right. That makes sense. All right. So now, oh, this is actually the perfect clip coming up next. We're going to argue about who talks the most on the phone with uh, Kate. You are like the least threatening person I've ever met. But you said that. Like, I like I never, I, I was never, but say that. nothing but nice to you. Like, I... Dude, you would call me like eight time, eighteen times a day. Like, I know until you block me. I never blocked you. I just unfollowed you on Twitter. Hold on, I'm getting a little jealous, Chad. Okay, who was better on the phone, me or Chad? John. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I just want to make sure. Oh, and so when you were saying I was your best friend, that was all bullshit. This is real. Look at, look at me in the middle right here. You think this is real? <laughs> this is men who are hurt. <laughs> I know. This there are definitely wild. real feelings. This is These are real feelings when Chad's going, but we were best friends. You told right. me so. And it's real phone. jealousy from John. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, that both of these things are real. I don't think Kate wanting to talk to them for real. Well, maybe it is. If she's calling Chad 18 <laughs> times a day, maybe I'm the idiot here. The thing is... I. You know this girl. They they if they lived in the same town with them with her and had game, they probably could fuck her. They probably could. If they had game. She, That's a big She's if. out for late night uh uh strip clubs and cocaine and drinking. She is up for it. That's she's true. She's proven that. These guys are so in their own head and they're so bad at women. <laughs> That they cannot, well, and now they're fighting over. It's sad, but you no, know, you're right about that because when I said earlier, and I think that Melton had this in his thumbnail today, so I'm not, I'm not the first one to say this, but Chad's proving is an incel. Imagine you're having phone conversations with a girl, and the conversation you're having is, "Who are best friends? Are you, am I your best friend? Who's your best friend right now? Is it me? Who's better on the phone? Who's better on the Who's phone? Is it me? What does that even mean? What the fuck are you talking about? I think this later like on a, he goes, whose phone's better? It's like a survey after a customer service call. <laughs> How did John satisfy your needs today? <laughs> did you did you talk about everything you wanted to today? Right. Did you hit all the points? Yeah, any other questions or problems that can be alleviated by Chad Zumok tonight? <laughs> Dave Delfior, I pronounce it the right way, comes in, member for six months. John needs Joey C for redemption. He might. Ugh. Shall we see? I don't know what's going on. I can't on with hop that. aboard that arc. I'm not getting on it. <laughs> well, Joey C was supposed to come to our show in Tampa, mm -hmm. but I don't know what's going on with that now. We're, we're not going to have any church services going on when we do the live show down there. Creeps maybe, people out. Maybe, yeah, no, it kind of rubs people the wrong way. Maybe we will, though, at Hackamania, May 31st through June 2nd in Las Vegas, hackamania.com. Yes. People should definitely uh, come visit us when we're doing that. I'm looking forward. That's a whole weekend. What are we doing that weekend? Uh, it's going to be great. There's going to be stand-up comedy. We've got, uh, so far, we've got uh, Kyle Anderson. You might know him from that Chris D'Elia documentary. Yep. Um, he did a Earl great Skankel, job with that. Ray DeVito. We've got Pat <sighs> Dixon, myself, coming out of retirement. Nice. Nice. Because Chad says, I can't do it anymore. It's like, I can whip up. I can host the show and whip up 10 minutes of new material for you, Chad. So I'll do that. Uh, we're going to have uh, an open mic competition uh, after that. Uh, late night Vegas, like kind of Kill Tony-esque. Oh, sweet. Open mic uh, with a panel um, and online feedback. All these shows will be streamed, too. We're going to work on that, uh, getting a package if people can't make it out. And then Saturday will be the day of podcast. We're going to have uh, 
a lot of podcasts. <laughs> it's a long day. <laughs> Excellent. I know that um, I did the creep off yesterday with Vinny, and he goes, hey, can we do the creep off when we're out in Vegas? I said, let me ask Patrick. So I think we'll probably sneak a creep off episode in there. Well, I definitely yeah, have- I think we have the room all day. So it's just about like pushing back the start times earlier and earlier. Cause- Beautiful. You know, but we'll figure it out. All what, the what? scheduling itineraries and everything will be announced a little closer, but tickets are on sale now. They are going. I'm I'm really happy with it. And nice. I know you haven't really even been plugging it yet because you got the event coming up um, in uh, Florida, but it's going to be great for people. It'll be different. So you you know this. You can come to both events. and They're going to be very, very different uh, events. Correct. And I think they'll both be fun. Yeah, yeah. Vegas is a weekend. Like we're all right. hanging out for the weekend. Right. Yeah. It's Atlantic City on steroids, which is true of Vegas anyway. But it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm I'm really looking forward to that event, and it's it's one that Patrick is organizing, so I don't have to do any of the work, which is nice too. Eee, <laughs> yeah, that. That's fun. It's going to be stupid. Melton can't do anything. <laughs> all right, so this gets really fucking stupid as we talk about who's best friends with who. So, okay, okay, what is it? I mean, you you told Chad that you were that he was your best friend. <laughs> I never said that. <laughs> All right. Let me just back that up. Let's play that again. This is sincere, John. This is not a bit that he's doing. So, oh, wait, so wait, I thought you hear that right. No, so, Kate, okay, what is it? I mean, you you told Chad that you were, that he was your best friend. I never said that. Multiple lies. John, she's lying. She's lying multiple okay. times. This she knows like she's lying. Court. Okay. Okay. Was she lying when she said that you were her best friend? She lies a lot. I wonder if that was a lie as well, Chad. I'm just throwing it out there. You don't spend six it's hours on the phone with a man unless it's serious. It's well, it's got to be real. There is, there is something to that. I just don't know how Kate wouldn't have friends her age that live near her. I don't understand that part of it at all. This is his, her best friend lives in Tampa and is unemployed. That's her best friend. <laughs> Why? Well, either way, she's enjoying this. Uh, well, yeah, no, she loves the attention. It, is being a pro comic unemployed, Carl? <laughs> oh, I forgot. He's got a gig in uh, March, I think. <laughs> okay, Kate, swear in your mother's life that you didn't say that Chad was your best friend. Yeah, your mother's I life. I won't swear on my mother's life. I'll swear on my father's, though. See? Because he's already dead. <laughs> <laughs> There's that laugh again. What a ghoul. Yeah. These two hoot and holler at the most basic jokes. A woman who works in a comedy club and has seen it all. Yeah. And a man who claims to be a pro comedy writer. They they I don't know if you missed the comedy pyramid they did earlier where they're talking about Ray DeVito. I don't think he's worth nine thousand. I don't think he's worth seventy five. Yeah. I don't think he's worth zero. Yeah. Ah, they were oh, crazy. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. like, whoa, you guys really did it. You really worked off each other so well. But she definitely has daddy issues. If she's making jokes about her father here being dead. And so that kind of makes some sense why she needs this attention from these people who are 30 years plus older than she is. That's why I'm saying I don't think it's tar- I don't think she's targeting John. I think it's really like she needs attention from older men. It's why she dated Dove Davidoff in his 50s. It's I mean it's just like her mom has to be looking at the men she dates and going I could date these men. <laughs> well, if uh, if she wants to get her mom upset, here's the clip for that. Yep. You wanted to go to a strip club, and I was like, I got to go to the airport at 6 a.m. Yeah. Kinky Kate. You they're wanted to fun. go to a strip club. Strip clubs are amazing, and they're fun. Are you kidding me? I love that. I used to take my wife to the strip right? club all the time. And she was looking for cocaine. I'm like, that's no, not I my thing. No, I wasn't, Chad. Yeah, you come do. on. You lying. No, I wasn't. I wasn't. Like, You're lying. You're stencil. just trying. Bring on no, stencil. we don't need to do that. We don't need to do that. <laughs> all right. Now I'm starting to see the appeal here. She wants to do blow and go to strip clubs. All right. She's a fun time. Starting to get it. That's what I'm saying. Like, if they live, if they had any game at all, this is this is a sure thing. Yeah. This, this is a no-brainer for sure. But that is how you react if you weren't doing looking for cocaine, right? No, 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 Chad, yeah. Chad. We don't need to do that. We don't need to do that, Chad, yeah. Chad. No, no, no. Yeah. What, what's ask Stancil who you were asking for the coke? No, no, no. We don't need to get Stancil out here, that liar. No, 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 no. All right. So this gets John very excited, as you can see there, where he's just like, whoa, you like to go to strip clubs? I'm surprised you guys didn't talk about that for the fucking 80 hours you've been talking on the phone. What yeah. do they talk about? What do they talk? Well, they did... 
leak a little bit of what they talk about. They talk about Stevie Lou and Kevin Brennan and Ray DeVito. I bet my name gets brought up a few times. I'm sure yours does. Yeah. They're she's just admitted, bitching. She's admitted that she's cried herself to sleep with wine about me more than once, which is insane. <laughs> <laughs> so is that's funny because John was going to have Chad on his show to shit on Ray DeVito, even though John and Chad have obviously had their issues. But th- there was an apology made in Atlantic City, so it's all better. Weird how that works. But that's interesting. So Kate is calling these people up because they also don't like the people she doesn't like. Do yeah. people need this? I don't live in a world like this where I'm just like, I'm so mad at that guy. I'm going to call someone else who's mad at that guy. We'll both talk about how mad we are at that guy. As funny <laughs> yeah. as it is to comment on, it seems like an exhausting way to live. <laughs> Do you think? Yeah. Fuck, if and I didn't have a show, ch- I wouldn't be watching any of this. <laughs> right. <laughs> and it'll change. Like, she'll be on the phone with Ray DeVito about Chad next week. And then she'll be on the phone with Chad about John. And then on the phone right. with John about Ray. And it's like, ugh. Yeah, I know. It's, it's exhausting. Um, this is, you want to talk about pathetic. <laughs> this, I mean, it, it's unbelievable. These guys make themselves look worse and worse. You, you should not do a show with an attractive woman. You look terrible doing it. Hey, Chad, weren't you amazed at how nice I am in person? <laughs> you were. You were. I'm glad we squashed it and you accepted my apology. And, and the, I will say this, John, out of everybody at that shit show, you actually sat there and tried watching it, unlike other people. So I appreciate well, that. Not- Okay, this is a great part yeah. coming up right here. So first off, can you believe how amazing of a guy I am when we hung out? What a weird fucking question. Tell Kate I'm really cool to hang out with. Oh, uh, yeah, you're great, John. Amazing. Tell her that joke I told earlier that, that was real funny. <laughs> Remember you guys Say were all it. laughing at the Uber? Remember? <laughs> so now John's going to explain, and we've all heard this story, where at the comedy show, it was Keanu, Tony Mazur, Chad, and Gino doing a stand-up show. That was a little ways away from the Borgata. So at the comedy show, I guess they didn't have a nice PA equipment or a good microphone. People couldn't really hear very well. So John gets up and yells at everyone to shut the fuck up so that they can Walks listen to the to comedy the middle show. of the room. Well, this is the thing is that John needs the attention on him, but you're going to hear his version of it. Uh-huh. And there's something very telling about this. I appreciate that. Well, not only that, if you remember before you went on, I stood up because I, I knew everybody was like a, like a lot of people were fans of mine. And yeah. I said, look, guys, the audio is not good. Don't talk. Let the comics do their act. Try to keep it down. Don't you remember I did that? Yeah. No, I appreciate that. That was very, very nice. Isn't nice that year. kind of me? Oh. Is that, is that Jordan over there? He's not going to throw the ball around a little bit? Come on. <laughs> he, People want to see it. They want to see he it. He goes, I knew they were all fans, and he caught himself. Uh, some of them are big fans of mine. <laughs> like, he... He really It'd thinks, be weird if I didn't say anything. They wanted me to <laughs> yeah, stand right. right. Yeah. He he really thinks that all of Atlantic City. I think it's because of a Steve or Steve Vince, the the loser, telling him this over and over again. He really thinks that none of this would have happened. No one would have cared about it if John weren't there yelling skull. Yeah, the weekend would have fallen every other apart. Beer, yeah, it's unbelievable. Okay. But I so. love that he did both. He sat there and was attentive to the comedy show, and he kept standing up and making it about him. I, <laughs> yes. It takes a lot to be able to do both those what a things. Guy. Yeah, yeah. He, I think he won the comedy show. <laughs> I, I saw the scorecard and said, yep. "John came out the victor. He got the belt." <laughs> All right, so this is hilarious, and I'm, I'm glad you're here for this, Melton, because John's already spinning things that happen in Atlantic City. We're just like a week off right now, right? A little over a yep. week away. Imagine if John survives the next year or two, what this week is going to turn into when he starts telling these stories. And you weren't there when I almost beat up Fatty Patty and Rocco. I, I came in the night after, but I saw that video too. Well, you know, I almost beat the sh- you know, I wanted to beat the shit out of Rocco. Yeah, Rocco's the worst. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, I don't yeah. like that man. He almost beat the shit out of Patrick Melton and Rocco. You missed it. I almost beat them up. What? For, for the record, <laughs> and I've had a lot of, you know, I, I I didn't analyze that first night video with me and him yeah. appropriately because, like, when you're in it, you don't, I, I didn't even really pay attention to the video. And I always defended John. I said he didn't call security over. I think that would have happened either way. I don't think he, he necessarily told the woman to bring him over. Um, But if John wanted to fight, we were... A foot three feet away from John all day right. Sunday. And when the thing happened, he shows a photo. I'm standing right behind Rocco. You see me right behind the photo he shows? Yeah, I'm going to show that in a second. And, and 
They were cheek to cheek. Rocco said the the queef heard around the world joke. Yep. And then John ejected and ran from the situation. And then once Stevie Lou got him, he acted like he wanted to come back and fight. And we were both standing there, Rocco and I at this point. This is the third or fourth time John had propositioned me to go outside and fight. Okay. And and so it got more aggressive where we'd be like, fuck your kids, fuck your trans kids, fuck your boy girls, fuck your they thems. We started like getting really aggressive with it. Sure. And Rocco and I started doing that to him right after that happened. He was right next to him in the video. If you were that mad, you would have immediately just turned and started hitting. But he, he got away with Stevie Lou, and then he started yelling, I'll take you both right now. Let's go to the parking lot. Let's go right outside right now. And we couldn't film it. We had been told we couldn't film. Right. And, yeah, so he, that's why Rocco didn't put that video up till Monday. You know, we didn't want to get trespassed from the work audit while we were there. But, yeah, he, he could have fought anyone at any point. But that was turning into he almost he almost beat you up. It's yeah, almost yeah. like he's saying that you guys had a fight and it ended in a draw. He's like, I almost beat him up. It's like there yeah. was no it wasn't even close to almost. It first went to off a decision. First I know. First off, I saw the video, the, the first skirmish you guys had. And yes, John didn't call security over, but he was definitely making a lot of noise to make sure the security, because the one woman was standing there the whole time, right. to make sure that she called people over. And as soon as they got there, he started saying, this guy was talking about my kids. He was trashing my kids. That guy's got a camera. I'm a celebrity. He, starts ta- yeah, he, starts, he said, he said yep. I'm a celebrity. He starts tattling on everyone. So John likes to say he didn't call security. Doesn't matter. When they showed up, you couldn't wait to tattle on everyone. You, what's security supposed to do? This guy was trashing my kids four and they a half months ago on the I, internet. I would laugh in his face. <laughs> they went back to the camera and saw that he was about to like, uh, I, again, I think I knocked his hand accidentally. Yeah. But they went back to the camera and saw that he was coming in at me with his hand and they asked me if I wanted him thrown out. Oh, no and shit. I was, like, I was like, no, no. Wasn't that funny? Because KB certainly wanted Bob Levy thrown out. Yeah, he, he walked away yelling. At he throw couldn't throw wait out, to tell security to throw them out. What is wrong with these bitches? So bizarre. So anyway, that's why I'm saying John has turned this into he almost beat up Patrick Melton and Rocco Burrow. Both of these guys would annihilate John. He's not in good shape. He's a short little guy. He's much older than both of them. It, none of this makes any fucking sense. Nobody thinks yeah, that. I mean, I'm not, to set the record straight, I'm not in good shape or know how to fight either. But right. I'm 6'5", and he's 5'7". I mean... It, it just, he's got T Rex arms. It, it's <laughs> yeah. bad. It's bad. I picture Patrick just holding him back by the forehead. You know. Well, Patrick said <laughs> Patrick said the best thing because you see the video. Patrick's just standing there with a cigarette in his hand, just looking at John, not flinching or anything. And Patrick said afterwards, he goes, "I saw the guy. He's intoxicated. He's small. If he would have thrown a punch, it wouldn't have done any damage. So I wasn't worried about it. I've been hit in the face. I know what it feels <laughs> yeah, like. Right. Uh, I, I, he he could barely reach. I knew that immediately I'd just knock him on the ground, and that would probably be the end of it. Right. Because <laughs> yeah. he'd need help up or yeah. a rope ladder. <laughs> like a turtle. <laughs>